Hello, good day, and welcome back to another episode of Lab Talk, uh, the series where we share expert tips and best practices to help you get the most out of the products in your lab. So today is Thursday, November 16th. Uh, our topic for today is all about best practices for QC stock culture maintenance. My name is Megan McDowell, if you haven't met before, and I'm excited to welcome our speaker, Anastasia Kissler. She's a product manager for QC Organisms here at Thermo Fisher Scientific, and she has a great presentation lined up for us today. So while she's speaking, if you have any questions, please feel free to use either the group chat or the Q&A window um, at the bottom of your screen, and we'll have some time at the end uh, to answer those questions. And you can also adjust the sizing of any of the windows on your screen. So if you'd like the slides to be any bigger or smaller, you can move your mouse to the corner and drag and it'll resize that for you. So uh, I will now pass it over to Anastasia to get us started. Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. I have the pleasure of speaking with you today about one of my favorite topics, QC organisms. In this lab talk, we'll review the proper use of QC organisms the various sources of cultures available for laboratory use, as well as a variety of culture formats that may be purchased. We'll also cover best practices for preparing in-house stocks, which requires an awareness and understanding of passage numbers and involves using seed lot technique. Finally, we'll review proper culture storage conditions. I hope you're all as excited as I am, so let's begin. Laboratories and clinical, pharmaceutical, and la uh, food industry settings use QC organisms to assess their laboratory practices and culture media performance and microbial detection methods and to train personnel in using proper testing techniques. The QC organisms used for these practices are selected to mimic patient samples in clinical labs or food contaminants in food processing facilities or environmental contaminants in biopharmaceutical or manufacturing facilities. The QC organisms are often characterized by genetic variations or antimicrobial susceptibilities. Best QC culture practices always st start with the use of authenticated strains. The most well-known strain libraries are the ATCC or NCTC. There are many other libraries throughout the world. Authenticated strains are generally available no matter where your laboratory is located. These laboratories authenticate organisms using a battery of tests such as biochemical reactions and genome sequencing. They maintain the organisms from the day the culture has been deposited into the library to the day it ships to a lab purchasing the organism. Using unauthenticated strains can have severe consequences. If your QC organisms do not perform properly, you're risking your patient samples or jeopardizing the sterility of your vaccine because the quality control material that you've used is questionable. When you're buying QC organism cultures, make sure they are coming from strain libraries. The certificate of analysis accompanying the organism should cite the source. You'll see a symbol such as the ATCC license derivative logo shown on the slide here. It'll be on the C of A to ensure the purity of the organism. The C of A will also summarize the test performed to confirm the identity of the strain. Almost all regulatory bodies documentation provides cross-reference strains from different libraries. If the strain that you've purchased is not listed on the regulatory documents, check with your regulatory body to make sure it is acceptable to use that strain. Taking this step could prevent a citation during an audit. The examples noted here on the slide are from the CLSI QC strain requirements for antimicrobial susceptibility testing and USP 31 section 61 for growth promotion testing. As you can see, the CLSI requirements list a specific ATCC organism number, while the USP document contains a laundry list of equivalent strains. QC organisms are available in a variety of formats. The conventional format may be in a single or double glass vial. Glass vials require careful handling because the top of the vial needs to be broken. This means scoring it with a file, or possibly heating it over a flame to weaken the glass to break it. Um, so if you're clumsy like me, 
maybe not the best way to handle a microorganism. The organism within the vial is freeze-dried and may be rehydrated with a broth media using a careful pipetting technique. Due to the nature of the freeze-drying process, the organism may not readily grow and it could require extended incubation. We also have uh, convenience culture formats available to us in an easy to use uh, format. So commercial companies uh, will partner with reputable source libraries and then use the organisms to produce a licensed derivative product. The ready to use organisms are typically preserved in a format that avoids the need for a serial dilution, uh, such as a lyophilized pellet or a disc. There may also be preserved in a manner that can be applied directly to an agar plate, which be such as thermoscientific's culti loop products. Culti loops have the additional advantage of refrigeration storage. This eliminates the need for a 20 degrees Celsius or minus 70 degree deep freezer to preserve the QC culture. Speaking of freezers, in this section of the presentation, we'll review best practices for preparing your own stocks of QC organisms from authorized sources such as the ATCC strain library. This involves creating seed stocks and also having an awareness of passage numbers and knowing the correct storage techniques for in-house freezer stocks. If your freezer stocks look anything like the photo on this slide, now may be a good time to review these practices. If you are preparing your own stock cultures rather than using an easy to use commercial format, all regulatory bodies advise to maintain the cultures of QC organisms through the use of seed stock or also called seed lot technique. When you receive a QC organism from a strain library, the organism is grown in broth or on starter plates. The material grown in this step is critical for preparing frozen stock, and this is referred to as master seed stock. The master seed stock is then suspended in broth and aliquoted into several vials for freezing. After a minimum 48 hours of freezing, a vial is tested to check the purity of the sample via identification methods, such as biochemical analyses. You would then grow a working culture from the freezer stock onto a plate or a slant. So I am frequently asked about culture passage numbers. Well, what are they? Simply put, they are every time a live culture is subcultured that's a passage. When you freeze a culture or preserve it in a gel or in a disc, that is not a passage because the preserved culture is not in a viable state. Once that preserved culture is rehydrated or thawed and grown on to a fresh uh, agar, that's a passage. So I like to think of this um, suspended animation, kind of like uh, that scene in Star Wars, when Han Solo is in carbonite, the organism isn't exactly alive, but it's not dead. So it's once you go to use it and you've revived it, that that's the passage number. It's important to minimize passage numbers because overpassaging increases the chance that an organism can mutate and cause genetic drift. Increased passaging also increases the likelihood of contaminating the culture. So this is why industry standards provide guidelines for limiting the number of passages. These same culture passage definitions also apply to those easy to use commercial culture formats. The manufacturer of the convenience format must subculture the organisms from a source library strain, such as the ATCC. The manufacturer then preserves the organism in their method and sells it on to a customer. So when a customer receives a convenience format product, uh, such as a disc or a frozen pellet or culti loops, the lowest passage number that a customer can receive is passage two. So UCAST 
um, suggest preparing subcultures from freezer stock vials, and then you use this subculture to prepare daily cultures, while, of course, continually checking the purity of the organism throughout the process. This can be performed for several weeks. A fastidious organism can be subcultured daily, but for no more than one week. You would use several colonies when you subculture to avoid selecting a mutant colony. Now, CLSI suggests limiting passages to no more three from the stock culture of a reputable source. So stock culture would be, in when you're talking about a convenience format, would be that loop or disk would be considered the stock culture. USP and ATCC guidelines limit subculturing to five passages, and that would be from a source library string. So this um, diagram helps outline what can be felt a complicated process of understanding all of these passages that we just walked through. This is a four-week stock culture maintenance program. Um, this is per CLSI guidelines. So you've got the QC organism at the beginning of this process coming from a convenience format such as uh, thermoscientific's culti loop. And since it's in a convenience format, keep in mind the organism is in suspended animation there in passage one. As soon as that organism grows onto a plate, that's passage two. And then those working cultures, so you can see four of them down the one side, those are passage three. And each of those daily cultures going down the line are passage four. So these stock cultures need to be refreshed every month. If you do prepare an in-house freezer stock, use a cryoprotectant such as glycerol to avoid the formation of ice crystals. You also must freeze the stock slowly at a rate of one degree Celsius per minute. There are commercial kits available uh, containing isopropanol to help with the freezing process. When you're ready to use a vial from your freezer, spot quickly in 37 degree water bath for a quick thaw. Freeze slowly, thaw quickly. The record keeping that's required for tracing in-house freezer stocks must be meticulous. You have to record the strain details, the library reference number, the in-house lot number, the date that it was prepared, the expiration date, and of course, the passage number. Once a freezer vial has been opened, do not refreeze it. Um, when you open that vial, you create a chance for contamination. The vial's already been thawed, so refreezing it will stress the organism. And as you can see by the photo on the um, slide here, even opening your freezer to grab uh, your tray of vials and remove the vial and then putting the tray back in the freezer can lead to the formation of ice crystals. The freezer in the photo has a layer of frost around its interior just from opening it. So this is where those commercially available derivative cultures, these easy to use formats, provide a cost-effective and risk-averse solution to all of the documentation we just described maintaining in-house freezer stocks. So in summary, QC organisms are a vital part of every laboratory. It's important to ensure that the QC organisms are sourced from a reputable strain library. Also refresh your QC cultures regularly and be mindful of passage numbers and storage conditions that will affect the integrity of your QC organism. And keep in mind those ready to use QC organism products, such as QuantiCults or Culti Loops, eliminate the time, effort, and resources required to create and maintain in house freezer stocks. For more information on this, I would recommend visiting thermofisher.com quality control website. So we have a wealth of information regarding the use of QC organisms in laboratory workflows in clinical, biopharmaceutical, and food industry settings. We have instructional videos for our unique QuantiCult and CultiLoop QC organism products, as well as smart notes specific to different industry topics, such as QC organisms for antimicrobial resistance, pharmaceutical environmental monitoring, and food safety settings. So it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. I hope that the information contained in this presentation is useful for your laboratory operations. 